Good evening, Internet, and welcome back to Bloodstone, the Four Dads 5th Edition D&D campaign set in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, it is my pleasure to bring to you this evening four of the five members of our cast. Drog is still, unfortunately, unaccounted for. He's, uh, he's dealing with real-life stuff right now, uh, has some other things that he's, he's dealing with, so he's unable to join us, but we've got uh, the rest of our fantastic players. How are you gentlemen doing this evening? Seeing some mm. thumbs up? Okay. Seeing some... Doing fantastic. There we go. There's... <laughs> uh, we'll get right into the game here in just a moment. Um, oh. It has been a few weeks since we've played. We had our 30th episode back on, I guess, was, was it third? Has it been three weeks already? We had uh, some uh, some issues with uh, availability, some scheduling problems uh, these last couple of weeks. Um, entirely due to me. Um, I was traveling last week for work, and the week prior to that I had some family uh, responsibilities to deal with. But we are back this evening for episode 31, and this one will be called the Well of History. <laughs> Zale doesn't like that. <laughs> I think it's more like the Well, Well, Well of History. Oh, well. The, um, I, I guess, unless there's anything in particular you gentlemen want to bring up prior to us getting rolling, we'll just we'll go ahead and get started. Ooh. Sounds like Souls has got some uh, daddy issues. Going I got a, I got a, I got a little one sitting right here trying to yeah. trying to do her fifteen minutes of reading so she can get video games this weekend. So I'm <laughs> trying to try to be quick on the mute button because I realized the mute button on the mic doesn't do anything, <laughs> which has probably made a few stream conversations with my wife very weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Regardless, uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and jump off into tonight's episode. Just a reminder: uh, last night we had our, I think our eighth, um, maybe ninth, Starfleet Battles Academy episode. Um, it was a, a an interesting one. Um, we have decided that since it. We weren't able to complete it that we will be picking up well, preserving that one and completing it the next time so uh, I believe it is the 7th yes the 7th of October will be our next Starfleet Battles Academy and we'll be doing part 2 of Wind Mountains Walk the scenario that we're playing through in Starfleet Battles Academy where a battle between the Federation and the Klingons gets interrupted by some unexpected visitors, the Jindarians. Uh, in addition, we have uh, the remainder of our streams this week. Um, we, we're, we're planning on having our Thursday and Friday streams for sure. There's a possibility that we will not be streaming this Saturday as I will be traveling once again. The expectation is at least that our league streams for this Thursday, Arampocalypse, and Friday Night Fights will proceed as normal. And then, of course, be back with us next uh, next Tuesday, the 1st of October, uh, we hope, for another episode of Bloodstone. Assuming that the campaign doesn't come to a crashing halt right here. And so, which is always a possibility, right? The rocks fall kind of thing. EPK. A full mm -hmm. EPK. We've, uh, we've only barely... Uh, escaped that on a couple of different occasions, I, as I recall. But that is neither here nor there at the moment. When last we left our intrepid group of adventurers, the party had returned to Oakheart, the ancestral manse of House Oaks, um, recently risen to the barony of Morov. Eldrick himself has been promoted, I, su I suppose, or has ascended to the barony of Morov, and at least for the time being, is running the barony out of Heliogablis, 
the manor of his father, Titus Oaks. Um, after returning there, uh, after a somewhat disastrous ending to his ascension party, uh, caused by an assault on the city, uh, unexpectedly, um, and some interesting revelations as to the uh, nature of the political landscape in the Bloodstone Lands, the Bloodstone Kingdom, uh, the party has returned to uh, to regroup, to rest, and to seek some additional information before making their decision as to exactly what they're to do next. In the midst of this, uh, they've received two unexpected visitors at Oak Heart, uh, one being one Partick Talandar, a.k.a. Partick Wolfswift, uh, an old, sometimes ally, sometimes adversary of the companion protectors, who came calling on uh, Therosal specifically, asking him to assist with a job. Therosal turned him down out of hand, but then started to have some second thoughts after Partick left, uh, having some conversations with his other uh, teammates or party members, realizing that perhaps he was a bit hasty and could perhaps have uh, missed out on an opportunity to work alongside uh, alongside Partick and figure out exactly what the enigmatic adventurer slash mercenary is up to in the Bloodstone Lands. Um, in addition, uh, a, a herald, uh, a herald of the realms, a member of the Herald's faction of, uh, that is prevalent throughout Faerun, uh, came to visit Eldrick apparently ap after having made an appointment. Uh, she's there in a, an official capacity with Eldrick's ascension to the barony. It is a requirement or at least a strong suggestion that Eldrick register with the Heralds uh, and... Uh, essentially establish himself within their roles of the nobility. Uh, the heralds record the uh, veracity of, uh, of noble personages throughout the realms and, and, uh, and serve as sort of uh, historians to the nobility. Uh, upon conversing with this person, uh, the lady Presmoira Voldreri, Eldrick found that she is, in fact, over 700 years old and has presided over similar meetings with multiple members of his family throughout the years, as well as other noble personages and, um, and historical figures over the last 700 years of uh, Faerunian history. Um, not exactly certain or, or, or caught a little off guard by uh, the just the, the sheer wealth of knowledge that mu must rest with this woman uh, Eldrick asked some very pointed questions but also uh, but actually re received more questions in return than answers um, he when we ended our session last week he had just asked if there was anything in particular that the Lady Voldreri would suggest that he pay closer attention to that would help him within his new uh, new office as the Baron of Morov, or uh, just in general. Uh, we'll get to that in particular in just a moment. Um, we will, what we're going to pick up with tonight's session is with Alanir. Alanir had spent some time in the courtyard of the uh, manor of Oakheart, meditating before the uh, the golden tree, uh, which has recently been revealed to have been a descendant of the white tree of Bloodstone, the uh, uh, the. The, the, the grand landmark uh, and memorial of the Bloodstone Wars some 13 years ago and also a uh, symbol of protection within the Bloodstone Kingdom. It is rumored uh, to protect against any sort of demonic invasion 
or incursion in the Bloodstone lands. Um, it was determined that the tree in the uh, courtyard at at Oakheart Manor is actually descended from a clipping from that tree and has grown to uh, a full sizable oak in a very, very short amount of time since it was planted there some years ago. Uh, Alanir had been doing some meditating, conversing with a proxy of his deity, asking questions about the tree, uh, and received some answers back, but unexpectedly was approached by Endurus, Eldric's new uh, Pegacorn companion. Uh, the winged unicorn steps up behind Alanir as he kneels before the tree and simply nudges it, him uh, on the back of the shoulder with his muzzle. That's where we'll pick up this evening. All right. Alanir's definitely going to kind of turn his head to look at the creature, still staying in his, like, almost prayer-like meditative pose. Um, I am a creature. He'll actually speak out loud and say, I don't suppose you can tell me whether you're linked with this tree or not. Uh, Endurus shakes its head, doesn't speak, at least not in a, in a way that is audible uh, to you. Alanir. But it does kind of toss its head, whether it's in in uh, response to your question, or if it's just a thing that a horse does. You're not entirely certain. But then it um, it lies down on the grass next to you. And kind of couches its head um uh, uh, sort of on its on its uh, four hooves. I guess I'll I'll keep talking what to it um, whether it actually can answer or not. Um, I'll just kind of ask out loud, be like, "Are you even capable of speaking?" kind of turns its head to face you its its eyes which are clearly the eyes of an intelligent creature meet yours and it sort of tosses its head again uh, in a way that you're coming to believe that it that means uh, is responding in the negative is unable to speak to you well then I'll cast speak with animals there you go And I'll kind of ask it again. Um, can can you understand me now? I can understand you. Yes. Ah, that is much better. You are uh, a companion of Eldrix. You are the protector. I I'm the protector. I mean, I, I definitely am a companion, but I'm not sure if a protector is a great name for me. Although, I guess it is what I kind of do. And Durish just kind of looks at you. It seems amused, but it doesn't say anything further. Do you happen to know anything about this tree? Or are you linked with this tree? Linked? No. The, the the white tree of bloodstone is not an Ilmatari artifact. It is not linked to the crying god so much as it is the platinum dragon. 
I know of the tree. I can feel the tree. But are we linked? I think not. Ah, so you are a servant of Vilmater? Indurus nods. And if I may be so bold to ask, exactly how is it that you came to be here? I was bidden to come. Eldrick called. I answered. And, uh, do you sense if there's any link between Eldrick and this tree? You keep using that word, link. What is it? What is it that you are seeking? I'm just trying to understand. This tree grew alongside Eldrick. I understand it was planted when he was but a child. That is my understanding as well. So... I, I guess what I'm more asking, is there some sort of magical connection between the two? I could not say. Oh, somehow I feel this tree just has gives me more questions than answers. The best mysteries tend to do so, don't you think? True. Although mysteries don't aid us right now. There's more than enough mysteries around us. If we could unravel a few of them, we would be better off. Endurus tilts its head. When you seek answers, when you seek answers, servant of the Earth Mother, where do you look? When you seek the parentage of a Of a of a tree of a plant. From from where does that spring? What holds the secrets of of this tree of of any tree? Well, I mean, any tree is a part of the circle of life. The natural order. It's birth, it grows, it eventually dies. It repeats the cycle all over. And but how? That's its purpose. How does it do this thing? A tree is grown from a seed. Yes. Perhaps seek the seed. Well, I believe the seat has already turned into a tree. It tilts its head again, as though considering that. And then it lays its head back down. Uh, I'm going to actually take a look at the tree. Um, as any oak trees, they usually will end up, don't they eventually have some sort of, uh, things they grow, like acorns or whatever that drop that can become seeds or whatever their equivalent is? Generally speaking, yes. 
Um, you I want to look up and see if I can fi see any of those. Um, make me a... Blah, blah, blah. Let's just do an invest uh, investigation check. Yeah. Okay. Come on, dice. Don't screw me. Because my bonus isn't going to do it. Uh, oh, I got a 16 total. 16. Okay. That's... that's uh... You look up into the boughs and uh, along the branches of the, the tree, which is very clearly some variant of an oak, and you see no acorns, no no seed whatsoever. Given what you know of the parentage of this tree, the white tree in Bloodstone similarly does not bear fruit or seed. It very rarely even loses its leaves, even in the worst of the winter. Uh, the, the leaves will change; they change color over the year, over the course of the year, but it very rarely even loses its leaves. This one seems to be similar in that you are not. It is late, late autumn, and you don't see any signs of it having lost any of its leaves. The leaves are golden currently, as it would be expected this late in autumn, but it doesn't appear to be shedding its leaves. You also okay. know, sorry, you also know go right ahead. that the, the white tree in Bloodstone, whenever it sheds any sort of leaf or branch, it's always an intentional thing, as though it's it is a gift that is given to the tenders of the tree. You bear one such branch of the white tree, the original white tree. Um, make me a history check. Oh man, I don't think I'm gonna pull off two uh, intelligence non-trained checks in a row but we'll see uh 10 total being a druid and being um a member of a circle within bloodstone valley uh even a 10 gives you um reminds you that the the white tree of bloodstone uh is much larger than it should be given that it was planted uh just just over a decade ago um and you do recall that it was not planted from a seed. Uh, at least not a seed that you would uh, that, that you would recognize. It was more like of a clipping of the tree rather than a seed. This tree was it was was formed by from a clipping. The original white tree was actually grown from a gem that was gifted yes. to Christine Dragon's Bane by an avatar of Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon. Or at least that's what the legend says. All right, he'll, uh, he'll turn back to Endurus and say, most trees will bear some kind of fruit or seed to grow new trees. This one, as well as the white tree, do not. But it seems whenever it does drop something, it's very intentional. Like a gift, perhaps. So that's why these trees are different than normal. Perhaps the fruit that these trees bear is less traditional. Perhaps what, what fruit they do provide is unseen just the same if you seek answers about the tree then perhaps you should seek out the seed I'm not sure if the original seed is actually still in its form 
Although it might be. The horse sh gives what looks to be a shrug and lays its head back down and closes its eyes. Across town, Throsel, you have uh, you've slowly made your way away from Oakheart and toward the Triune Gate. There is a uh, an inn that I can't remember the name of right now because I have a terrible memory apparently. Um. And no judgment on names for me, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's go to this. I suppose it's the Dusty Duchess. <laughs> it is not. It's called the Starry Night. Oh, yes. Oh, so it, close. It's a, a tavern, more like a restaurant, actually. Uh, it's specifically not an inn, but more like a, a an upscale restaurant that sits atop the wall. Uh, it, it is a a cluster of what used to be three watchtowers that were very, very close together and then have just been, they've had additional construction built between them that serves as the, the main floor of the uh, of the, uh, the, the the restaurant itself. Um, you work, you make your way up to the Starry Night, which you've been to before. Yeah, didn't I get whammied here the last time I was here? By some, like, vision or nightmare? Was that... Or am I mem remembering wrong? I, I I honestly don't recall. Um, I No, I, I do believe that you had a moment here where some kind of vision uh, or some kind of effect uh, put you at odds with some of the staff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> it, it, it would have been one thing or another had it not been a vision it would have just been Thorosal's personality regardless um, if anyone appears particularly wary upon you approaching they don't show it uh, you're greeted at the entryway um, one of the entryways as there are multiple um, and um, you once you make it into the main sort of dining area slash tap room, uh, you happen to notice that Pardic is uh, sitting across the room at a table with a red-haired gentleman that you recognize as Carrot, and uh, they appear to be having uh, what looks to be breakfast. All right. Um, I don't know what the Baron's carriage is going to do. I don't. I mean, I don't necessarily care either. So I'll I'll leave it to do whatever whatever the carriage driver wants to do. And and then when I head in, I'll just walk straight over to Hardik's table. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So you you can you can leave word with the carriage driver to to stay around, or you can send him back to the manor. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Um, I mean, at this point, it's his choice since I'm, I'm not going to really tell him to do anything. So okay, all right. So then, so you leave <laughs> the happen. carriage behind, regardless of what it does. You leave the carriage behind, head up to the Starry Night, uh, and uh, cross the room and approach Partick's table. Carrot notices you first. Uh, you see, he mutters something to Partick as he as he and you lock eyes, and then Partick. Uh, gives a little bit, what looks like a little bit of a chuckle, and as you approach the side of the table, he turns to look up at you and he says, "Took you long enough?" I'll just pull up a chair and sit down. He, you know, Elbert he thought it was a good idea to uh, to see what you had in mind. Sure, he says. I, uh, I understand. That's, um, are you, are you eating? You'll be joining us for breakfast? Of course you will. 
and he raises his hand to pull to uh, get the attention of one of the servants and uh, it is almost as though you were expected a um, a large platter of very similar to what Carrot and Pardic have in front of them as well as a uh, a frothy mug of ale are brought and placed before you so well Burles has been up all night so he'll he'll kind of take a look at it but he'll he'll eat why not over whatever he's about to say so you're interested you, you needed something delivered very simple it's they would call this a milk run in other places uh, in the world. Um, you, you're you familiar with the Dusty Duchess in Old Town? I am. He, <laughs> under the table, he, he shoves a uh, the, the fourth chair uh, from, on the table uh, out, and you can see as it, as it kind of scoots back, there is a very simple small, uh, probably 8 inch by maybe 6 inch 8 inch long, 6 inch wide, maybe 4 inch deep uh, small chest that is sitting in the seat of the chair. It says deliver this to the Dusty Duchess this evening uh, sunset simple as that whatever the uh, whatever is offered, we we I have a, I've been paid in advance, but whatever is offered by the uh, the recipient is yours to keep. Who's waiting for it? Who am I delivering to? He kind of gives a wave. Some rich tit from Impilter, um, Mary something. Carrot kind of gives him a mutter something kind of under his breath. Uh, Bex, Bexter? Bexton? Something like that? Bex, Bexton Mary something. What does she look like? Would hate oh. to deliver to the wrong Mary. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a he. Though... You'll you'll recognize him when you see him. He 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 will stand out uh, at the Duchess. Not the sort of uh, individual that would normally frequent such a place. You know, old money. Any any reason that you can't deliver this, or or send somebody else, hire someone else to do this? Well, there's no one else in town that that I trust as fully as I trust you, Therosal. If I need something, if I absolutely must have something done, well, then I would go to Eldrick. But Eldrick is a bit beyond serving as an errand boy, even if he is of only minor nobility. You are more of the, the sort of person that I would expect that gets things done nowadays, yes? Russell will kind of nod at that and then take a pull from his ale. Must appreciate the sort of man that knows who knows his place in the pecking order. Hardly that, but I'll get it done. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but stay. Enjoy your breakfast. Perhaps we can talk about old times. Um, you'll notice that he is not wearing any sort of weapon at this point in time. He, every other time that you've seen him, including last night, or, or even earlier today, not, not last night, but even earlier today, he was wearing both swords. He's not currently wearing a weapon. Carrot is. Carrot wears a sword. Um, maybe not old times, but maybe the future. What are your plans once you leave Heliogobulus? Oh very much uh, fluid why are you are you uh, do you have something in mind nothing in particular uh, 
just a figured uh, a man of your means would have plans. Oh, well, I am a I'm a man of leisure these days. Haven't haven't you heard? I, I'm I'm out of the mercenary life. The uh, the gold coins and I, of course, parted ways. Uh, the situation back home um, changed things a bit. But that's that's neither here nor there. Since it's, it's it's all very dull. I'm seeking my next opportunity. You don't suppose that uh, your master would be looking for a partnership of any of any sort? Let that one slide. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell by the look on his face that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> project it very openly that I just like hmm. uh, I, I'm not sure Eldrick's in the in the market for more ex-mercenaries to tow around you maybe Carrot that... is looking for a new job though Carrot kind of gives you a don't pull me into this kind of look <laughs> <laughs> no I I, I, I do understand that um, Eldrick is sort of up to his gills and has been mercenaries. But neither here nor there. It, it was a, a potential opportunity. I, I understand that your uh, your new guild here in... What, what's, what's the name of this place again? Is is uh, of is gaining some notoriety? Perhaps I'll throw in with that lot. It's all just seeking leisure, of course. You understand. Have to figure out some way to fill the hours. Sure. As you say. Why are you really here, Thorosal? I'll just kind of shrug and then sit back in the chair. I thought we were quits. I thought you made it very clear that you and I had nothing further to, to gain from one another. And yet here you are. Once again. Darkening my doorstep, as it were. You looking for another uh, round? No. I'm just making sure that we've got everything covered here before we leave. And uh, Eldrick thought that uh, perhaps this Impulterian might be of interest or something. I guess the bottom line is we need not be enemies at all. Enemies. I wouldn't say out. Enemies, Theros, of course not. You and I have of course not. Shed blood together. We're we're basically brothers. But you're leaving. This is new. May I ask? Jaunting off across the, the, the world again? Saving humanity? Who knows? It's still up in the air. Eldrick has to make a decision first. You know how nobles can be. <laughs> he gives you the, the the point like yeah that, that's a point for you for sure useless to a lot of them I'm sure but Eldrick Eldrick's a different breed he's particularly worthless mm. <laughs> of course I kid I kid I Eldrick and I are are well we are what we are I suppose no, I bear him no ill will for, you know, the murder. Mm. Of course not. But I'm this... Sure. But, but yeah. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued by this. Uh, you're, of course, not uh, not surprised. Ever the, the dutiful soldier checking to make sure that everything is covered before you leave. I, I can understand... Uh, that that doesn't sound like Eldrick. That sounds more like you. 
You said Eldrick sent you. So what what interest does he have in little old me? Uh, truthfully, all I've told you. Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps I'll have to pay another visit to the good Baron. His, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face, his excellency. <laughs> what will you country uh, nobles come up with next? Well, perhaps I'll just have to ask him myself. The... The manner in which we parted the last time, well, I, I don't think that anyone is particularly happy with the way things went. My father, especially. But, uh, but water under the bridge, as it as they say. Uh, just so rare that I make it out to these rural, uh, this rural kingdom any uh, anymore. And you've always been a source of great enter entertainment, your merry little band of whatever it is that you are. Can't fault me for trying. Hardik, you wouldn't be on the run from people, would you? On the run? Who in, in the realms could I possibly be on the run from? No, of course not, Therosal. Not at all. I go where I please, when I please, and I do as I please. Whether it's here, in my beloved home, or halfway across the world. And did I tell you about the time that I spent in uh, in Wa? It's a very, very far off nation very, very far to the east. They're, these people are even stranger than you are. Well, your people. Mm. Bruce will just not bite on this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, not interested? Oh, mm. Well. Eats. Drinks the war. I doubt you'd understand anyway. They're, they're, they're a very uh, backward, complex people. Um... Neither here nor there, I suppose. Regardless, no. I, we are simply passing through your little backwater. And we'll be on our way soon. Um, perhaps we'll cross paths. Hopefully not swords. In the future. Uh, remember, I'm out of character for a moment. Did he mention that he no longer has a ship? Earlier, whenever we he, talked, he didn't specifically mention that he doesn't have his ship. He did say that he had parted ways with the rest of his his band. Because I, I made that assumption then. Okay, it it was very heavily implied that mm -hmm. he he's not he's no longer in possession of the Blue Dragon's despair. Yeah, and not gallivanting around uh, the multiverse or whatever. Well, if there's nothing else that you uh, are, have interest in, see to the delivery of that to uh, this Bexton fellow. Sunset, don't forget, sunset this evening, the Dusty Duchess. You'll know him when you see him, and send a message whenever the, the job is complete. I, I do hate to leave loose ends untied. Will do. And wherever your travels take you. Good <laughs> yes. luck. To you as well, Thoros. It was... And thank you once again for reaching out to... to uh, with, with your letter. I... I do appreciate it. I am... Well... I hate to be in any man's debt. But... I am in yours. If there's anything that you require, within reason, of course, don't hesitate to reach out. He'll nod. I'm Just writing down the, the name of the ship. That's what I'm looking to. 
All right, there we go. Right. My index card is just a bunch of names, like a bunch of listening. <laughs> He'll Sorry. excuse himself Sorry. then. Okay. You're, as far as Partic is concerned, the second that you walk away from the table, you're forgotten, and that's not that's not unexpected with Partic. That's the, the the sort of personality that he has. He's he's on to, to bigger and better. Uh, the moment that you're out of sight. Whenever he, whenever I dropped the, uh, you know, are you on the run? Did he, he didn't seem cagey about that at all? Uh, make an insight check. You are welcome yeah. to do that. I'll do. Twenty-eight. Ooh. Uh, there was a moment's hesitation, but it wasn't so much that you think that he was lying to you. It was more that he mm. was thinking of how to frame the response in a way that was most notably Pardic. <laughs> right. As a jab. Okay. Sure. Maybe not strictly on the run, but maybe not going where he wants to go kind of thing. Get that vibe from him. Okay. All right, That's well, the, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll part ways with, with Partick, and I guess we'll see if that carriage is still out there. Um, Given that you were only inside for maybe 15 minutes, did you take the chest? Oh, yeah, I'll take the chest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so given that you were only inside for maybe 15 minutes or so, the, yes, the carriage is still downstairs. Okay. Well, I might as well get some shut-eye then. If I'll instruct the carriage driver to take me to the Bloodstone Arms. Might as well keep going with that tab while I can. Okay. Fantastic. I'll shake the... What, can, I, can I shake the little chest? Does it sound like it's... Something in it? Can I, can um, I try to take a guess? Uh, go ahead. What would we call that? A perception check, maybe? Let's, sure. let's do that. Only 15. Okay. Um, it doesn't really have a whole lot of heft to it. The chest mm -hmm. itself is fairly lightweight. And whenever you shake it around, there's not like the sound of anything hard rattling around inside of it. But there is a shift in its weight that suggests that there is something of of note or is something substantial in it. It's just not like, it's not coins or anything hard that is inside rattling around. Um, with 15, maybe you pick up the rustle of some paper. Come on. Is the chest locked? Does it have a, a locking mechanism or a padlock on it or something? It does not. Uh, it actually has latches. Okay, well... I'm not going to open it at the moment. Maybe my curiosity will, will be peaked after I have a nap or something. Russell's <laughs> <still> really tired. <laughs> <laughs> but for the moment, that's good enough. All right. Well, so, so once you once you get back in the carriage and being taken toward the Bloodstone Arms once again, I just realized that the arms is no longer on our map. I'm not sure why, but it is. Uh, it, it's no longer present on our map. It should be around about there. That doesn't sound like telegraphing at all. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure why could that be? I I, I can't uh, can't account for that missing. That's interesting. Maybe you uh, got taken out by some disaster thing. I suspect the Russell will find out when he gets there. I suspect perhaps he will. Alright, well anyway, the site where the Bloodstone Arms was on the map is <laughs> Is here, <laughs> and so it's not very long before uh, before you're pulling up in front of well, what you will find. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we will we will shift back over to Eldrick, who is uh, sitting still sitting at the great the table in the great hall with uh, the Lady Voldreri. Lady Voldreri seems to. Uh, give your last question about what she would suggest that you look into mm -hmm. um, to, to find the answers to the questions that you seek. Yeah. She kind of tilts her head. She gets this kind of this far off look, and then she looks down at the 
large, ponderous tome. History. Excellency. Is always sought and heeded by the wise. There is a proverb that I can't remember in its entirety, so I am going to grab that. Bear with me just a second while I... This is the consult. part where the old lady starts talking slower as she thumbs through the book trying to find it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Bye -bye. I, I love everything about this elven woman. <laughs> or el elven grandma. I'm almost there, so bear with me just another second and I will have the this thing for you. There She's the is. perfect bearer of like cryptic information because it's like you have to assume that maybe like there's a 25% chance she just literally doesn't remember the full thing. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. is a proverb that even I am not old enough to remember its origin. It says to learn of our past, you must dip from the well of history. She very, very slowly and ponderously closes the cover of the large ancient tome and in flaking gold leaf on the front of the cover is etched the well of history. She slides the book closer to Eldrick. I will leave this to you for a time. Before I take my leave, as always, there is one final parcel of business between us, Lord Oaks. The manner in which your father has met his end. Uh, hey, what? What is happening right now? Eldrick is dumb. Well, everybody gets your note cards yeah. ready. Yeah, I know. Is, is dumbstruck. He was already dumbstruck because she slid the book across so that he could borrow it, basically. And now he's like. I <clears throat> make before I, you, before you respond, make me a history yeah. check. A history check, my goodness. I'm sure I've got a great history. My history is just the best. Actually, it's an eight. It's a beautiful history. Uh, it's the great best history. history. <laughs> best Huge history. history. Now I just gotta find where my friggin' map is. There it is. A story says 18 on die, 26. Nice. He has the best history. It's, it's pretty good history. When she reads, or when she recites the proverb, to learn of our past, you must dip from the wells of history, that keys something in your brain. Something that you have heard or read before. It strikes you that there was a letter that was written to you some time ago that included those words. 
It was addressed to Apprentice Knight of the Order Eldrick Oaks. It is probably in my Google Drive as we speak. I would imagine it is. I do believe that it has been shared to you. Sure it has as well. I'm pretty sure I've read it at least ten times, so I have to reread that. Alright, got it. Anyway, that's in the in the midst of the conversation, that was something that you would have keyed on. Absolutely. Uh now about my father's death. Uh I was not aware my father had passed. Is that are those words that Eldrick actually... Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. He, he, he just <laughs> stares at her for a second. And he's like, he's keying off the letter, but he knows he doesn't have time to read that because he would go back and like read it in his room. And he's like, I I was not aware that my father had passed. Presmora tilts her head ever so slightly and very slowly as if now she's confused. Each time before, and she meets your eyes, and there's uh, make me a an insight check. Uh, yes, one second. Uh, insight. Oh my goodness. Uh. I got, I got a seven in that. My God, these are the things I'm actually good at. <laughs> God knows it's not fighting. Ooh, that's an 18 total. She meets your eyes as her, as she looks confused. She looks at you. She's kind of searching. And then you see her eyes widen slightly as though she just came to a realization of something. And she actually, like, leans back, still very, very slowly, leans back a little bit and kind of settles. And she has a very thoughtful look on her face, but the, the, her expression reads, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This was important. Holy crap. I see. Apologies, Eldrick. I must have misinterpreted something. Usually, when a new lord rises to power, it is After assuming his, the mantle of family, this is not the case in your unique situation, I see. Your father yet lives. With the 18... Who she else is, is in the room? She, it's just the two of you. Mm -hmm. But with the 18 insight, you can see she is backpedaling hard. She is trying no, to yeah, cover 100%. her ass. Yeah. yeah. That. Eldrick's going to put a hand on the book and kind of slide it to the side. And then he's going to lean, lean forward on the table. Not like intimidatingly, but just like he's obviously attempting to engage with her. I don't know. Is he? She leaves. He doesn't look angry. He just, he just looks very curious as to what exactly is going on. Because it is obvious that something very strange is happening. Especially considering the the last time comment she made last time. She leans forward a little. Your father is Titus Oaks. Yes?
that is what I have always believed, yes. She she smiles. It's a, again, it's a very slow thing. Think of the the sloth from Zootopia. How yeah, the, that's the, what the, I've been interpreting the entire scene as, yes. The, the <laughs> smile just kind of gradually spreads, and she gives this very slow chuckle. Indeed. Curious. Very curious. I do hope that Titus is well and apologize for insinuating otherwise. If you will excuse me, Excellency, it is long past time for me to rest. Elder Cole, stand up. Certainly. And he'll hold out a hand to escort her. Um, does she, uh, do I know if she's supposed to stay here or if she's leaving? There is a, there is a carriage waiting for her to return her to wherever it is that she came from. Likely somewhere on Palace Hill, because whenever the heralds come into town, they are treated as nobility themselves. They are important people. Absolutely. And that makes perfect sense. Um, Elder's going to hold out a hand to help escort her. He's going to pick up the book because he ain't leaving that on the table. That, that would be a terrible idea. I will send for the tome before I depart your fair city. And it will be returned. I greatly appreciate and am honored that you would allow me to read it. She puts a... She kind of tightens her hand on your wrist. If there are additional items you would have included for your father or for yourself. Please provide notes and they will be added. I appreciate it. I will do so. So you start to round the corner. Holy makes his way into the room and takes her off your hands. Before she, uh, when Holy's there, obviously in earshot, and she's, uh, you know, the transfer or whatever, Elric's going to ask, how do you even word that? It is understandable that one in your position might have things that they do not share. I would be curious if it is a personal decision or a promise to another. She very slowly cranes her neck back to look at you, says, each man's story is his to write. History is the same. And she turns slowly, hmm. pats uh, Durban Holy's arm, indicating that she's ready to leave. And he kind of gives you a look. Elder kind of nods towards the book and then nods to her. Thank you, thank you, Master Holy. Your Excellency. And he escorts her out very, very slowly. 
Well, I'm sure I can finish reading the book by the time she gets out of the building. <laughs> Probably just hand it back to her if she gets into the cart. No, El Eldrick is 100% going to sit down exactly wherever he is, whatever table he's next to, and he is just going to start pouring over them. Like, this is probably literally the most amazing thing he's ever held in his hands, and that's saying a lot, considering two other things that he's carrying and a number of other things that he's had in his possession at times. Okay. Um, okay. Then you start pouring over the book from cover to cover. Um, you'll notice that the, the, the first entries in the book are faded. Not mm -hmm. like not illegibly faded, but faded with the passage of centuries. It's and you you have to be extra careful with the pages as they are very brittle. Very hundred percent. You're uh, you're familiar with having to deal with very aged works, um, as a lot of the. A lot of the original tomes that you have access to within the Order, the Order's library, are religious texts that are said to be some originals, and you you are uh, you're, you're used to dealing with with very old books, so you know how to deal with them. Um, oh yeah. So you're very careful. Um. There is one thing that you note uh, the as you are. Moving through the, uh, the the first few pages, a lot of it has to do with uh, nobility and specifically the uh, the ruling house. The first entry is a brand new ruler uh, of such and such dynasty within uh, the city of Westgate, some near seven hundred years ago. Um, you're kind of thumbing through those. You know, there, there's not a whole lot there that interests you specifically. You're seeing the coat of arms, descriptions of uh, of these individuals, their names, any any family that they had living at the time, um, and then there's always space uh, left after them before the next entry, so that 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 they're their lives can be filled in as they happen. Right, the the, the major um, the the heralds will come back and add things to their story, add things to their entry as major life events happen. Um, some pages you'll note, the writing gets very very small, uses up all of the space in the margins. Sometimes that there there are big gaps that are left on pages because there's just not much happening. And the, the in the case where the individuals specifically um, at the beginning of the book in, spa in a space where those individuals uh, are deceased if the manner of their death is known it's recorded mm -hmm. um, so you're flipping through the pages and you come to rest on a page and you see something on this page specifically the coat of arms that you've seen somewhere before is it my ring that I found in prison? It is. It is the coat of arms that is engraved upon the signet that you lost in Symbia. And the, uh, the, the name attributed to it is a Sir Tierce Arcady. You it's, put that somewhere I can copy it because yep, intense name. I like it, but that's an intense name. It's a lot of name. Specifically, Sir Sir Tierce Arcady of Torm. Interesting. I don't particularly recognize that name. Does I, Eldrick? Eldrick, absolutely does. As there are a number of. Um, chat books that um, that Alanir brought copies of back from Candlekeep that are a whimsical uh, retelling of the adventures of one Sir Tierce Arcady. Hmm. 
the comic books that he brought back um, from uh, from Candlekeep that he was some he was led by someone to bring to you. Um, one of which was in the the uh, the satchel of things that your father gave to you, or the the man you believe to be your father gave to you. Well, the scary armor man. Scary armor that, man. That I am yeah. under the impression is is my father masquerading as terror incarnate. Yeah. Yeah. There was one of those chat books in with those those things. Mm. Um, the and all of those there's a series of them that were stored at Candlekeep that of which you have copies now mm -hmm. uh, that are whimsical like fairy tale like ch almost like a children's book illustrated adventures of Sir Tyr Sarkady and his amazing friends interesting and in the book so the book has his coat of arms what what does the book say about him uh, he was a minor, a, uh, a, a minor knight uh, of the Triad, um, hailed from Westgate. The the date that his name was recorded, I'm not doing the Bulldreary voice anymore. I just can't remember it, so I'm talking slow. No, I'm um, good. Is let's see. When you get to that deep lore, man, you gotta like massage them notes to make sure you get it right. I I made some mistakes last time. Uh, I some some things that we'll talk about in, here in just a minute that I I have to be extra careful that I don't repeat. Uh, specifically sure. around specifically around dates. Um, did I record see. any dude? Sure, I did. <laughs> oh, certainly about uh, my boy. My, my great great grandpappy. Uh, the year of the dangerous game, uh, which would be 658 Dale Reckoning, it was when Tears Arcady was first uh, recorded in this tome. Sorry, that's 658 DR? Correct. 658 DR, the year of the dangerous game. It was late in the year. Um. Do the, I know what the dangerous game was? The the, the year the roll of years have very uh, apocryphal sounding names that they don't always necessarily. Uh, relate but sometimes to they're events. Semi sometimes they do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. and no, you don't. You don't have any idea. I'm not a. I'm not aware of a particular dangerous game. Correct. Maybe the roll of years was just some guys were playing darts. Got it. Interesting. Westgate keeps popping up. That's fun. Uh, there are a number of notes that are added to Arcady's listing. Mm -hmm. that they're they're yep. very clearly added later. Yeah. Um, there is a an entry, and I've got to get the... I didn't write down the specific year name, so bear with me just a second while I pull that up and I get that mm -hmm. for you. But... Uh, six. Six. Oh, okay. Six sixty six. Uh, is the the year? That's of, either. Sorry. That's the year of stern judgment. Six 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 dr. Okay, that's either the greatest red herring ever introduced in a D&D campaign <laughs> or some serious lore is about to hit me in the face that I'm not going to understand. <laughs> um, the in, in cat died, right? What's that? It's going to be like his cat died. <laughs> uh, no, he retired from uh, from his uh, position as a knight and uh, celebrated the birth of his son, Nial. I guess I could scroll up to look at how that's spelled. I'll write it here. You are um, 
you're struck by that because you've heard that name recently. Uh, specifically, the, the, the first name, the given name. Mm -hmm. uh, Nial is the... There is a Nial Oaks. Actually, there are two Nial Oakses Wasn't... in your history. What well, not that the first Oaks? Right? It is. From it is the, the name... Game? It is the name of the first Oaks who was uh, mm -hmm. recorded as having joined or having traveled to Impilter. Right, as part during, of the whatever war during the, the 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 Fiend Wars, but that would have been mm -hmm. some some years later, um, uh, sixty gotcha. years later. Gotcha. Hmm. Your so your grand your great 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 grandfather and this is this is where we are where i'm i'm fixing the timelines a little bit here because i made some mistakes last time but gotcha. the the first uh the first oaks first mention of the oaks dynasty within damara at the founding or near the founding of heliogabalus uh, was a Neal Oaks, not the same one, because this happened 300 years later. Damara is only about 300 years old, little little over 300 years old. So it, it wasn't actually 600 years ago when the Fiend Wars mm -hmm. happened. All of this land yeah. was under a glacier. It right. wasn't it wasn't until about a thousand dr mm -hmm. that uh, that. Feldron Bloodfeathers came north and and founded Ravensburg, and then okay. some decades later, Heliogabalus was was uh, brought into the fold. Got it. Uh, but the let's see the year uh, the year eleven ninety two, the year of the guide, was the the year that. Uh, Nial Oaks established the his lordship within the the uh, the kingdom of Damara, or the, the the free the free city of Heliogabalus in Damara. So much much later than I had alluded to before. Quick question, uh, just to make sure I'm re I'm hearing that correctly. Nial Oaks founded Helio. No, he was he was there. He was there for short the shortly after he yeah. he was the first uh, the first mention of an Oaks in your family history. The oldest member of your family history Got it. Uh, that you are aware of is Nial Oaks, and that was just under two hundred years ago. He's your great 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 grandfather, I think. I got three greats. That's what you're. That's what you're saying. So we got it. All right. So this great. guy. Two greats. Two greats. Great. Two greats. Great grandfather. Excellent. And in six 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 dr, the year that will live in infamy. <laughs> comic book knight retired from his position as a knight to celebrate the birth of his son Nial. Correct. Is there any more information about who Nial was? There are. Uh, there are no additional mentions of an, a Neal Arcady. Uh, there is a mention some 60 plus years later of a Neal Oaks in Impilter. But there is no additional mention after that until Neal Oaks the name Neal Oaks shows up again almost 500 years later. I'm already looking at this being like, it's got to be an anagram. Um, <laughs> the interesting. All right. Well, Eldrick's going to continue to pour over the book for, for more information. Um, he's definitely jotting that stuff down. Uh, in his notebook like yeah these are the his, things that his are journal important. right yeah yes not the not the second journal the main journal right not, not the one that he hides in his 13th drawer of his 17th chest of whatever <laughs> but the the other one 
the the main one. All right. Because the because the audience will remember that Eldrick has two journals that I've been very sketchy about that are incredibly uh, paranoia driven. Uh, Macaria, several hours after you have, you return to the uh, Oakheart Manor and return to your rooms with Mycaria, you awaken to find, as usual, Mycaria sitting in the corner, staring in your general direction, sleepless. Um, and when she notices that you have awakened, she will say, It is nearly high sun. You have been sleeping for five bells. Okay. <clears throat> Well, I'm hungry. Um, anything okay. happen? You made sounds again in your sleep. What type of sounds? <laughs> Not where I thought you were going with that, but probably better. <clears throat> Yukaria settles a little bit. Okay. That's snoring. That's normal. Hmm. Is it normal to be hungry when you awake? Yeah. At least for most of us. We have to consume some energy since we spend energy. She nods. I think I need to send you on a little task. She you think you'd be up for it? Whatever you require. Sister. I need you to please, if you could, go get me about a thousand gold pieces worth of mercury and phosphorus, please. She gives a nod. She stands. M must, uh, w how will I pay? She understands the mercantile uh, yep. aspects. You've, you've showed her that before. I will give her money, but Makaria will first go, if possible, please put it on the Baron's tab. I'm learning that the Rothal has a way with just spending the Baron's money and it seems to go through. But if they will not take the Baron's word, then we do have coin to cover it. I understand. I will return presently. All right. She leaves. I want to go find Eldrick if I can. Eldrick is not difficult to find. You go and check his room, since it's right next door to yours, and it does not appear that the bed has been slept in. So you go looking in the uh, the meeting room, the little sitting room where you have encountered Eldrick on multiple occasions, and the rest of your party, and he's not there. So you go downstairs, and you find him huddled over a massive, thick, ancient, leather-bound tome uh, at, the, uh, at, at the head of the table in the Great Hall. Uh, there are servants that are trying to get him to eat, and there are things that are piled around him as though he is, they, they've, they've been trying for quite some time to get him to eat. Uh, but he looks exhausted. Uh, he looks a little a little frayed around the edges uh, but there is a light in his eyes that is almost feverish he's excited about something 
looking at the book for a moment, Makaria stops herself from trying to grab it and see what it is. She will make her presence known to Eldrick by doing the nice louder and louder until I am right next to him and he restands. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, Markari. I was very into, uh, well, the, the, uh, the historian left her, her book for me to peruse. Um, how, how can I assist you? I am worried, Eldrick, that something in your house is making me see things that I don't like. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I didn't see things like what happened at your Baron Mitzvah before. Usually I can understand what's happened, but something here in this house probably is causing it. Causing you to see things? Or to affect all of us in some form. So I would like your permission to go about and start dispelling things. Uh, that's going to be a no. Uh, there's a lot of things here that need to not be dispelled. What What are you seeing that is outside of the complete and utter nonsense that we saw the other the other day during my coordinate? That's the last night. Nothing. Exactly. Right. That is what, what I Yes, no, that definitely happened. Um So you're saying your your new mount is a dragon flash horse? Uh no, no, I think my mount is just a horse. Um I guess we could have Alanir confirm that he seems very torn talking to you versus like, he's like a little kid that's like trying to talk to you, but look at the TV at the same time. Like he's got the book in front of him and is obviously dominating his attention. But uh, no, no, my, my horse is definitely a horse uh, sent by Ilmater. Um, You know, we could have Alanir check that. Uh, I am worried about what we saw, but um you know, that seems like a tomorrow problem right now. It is tomorrow, Eldrick. Oh, that's un that's unfortunate. Um, and your mom is probably going to show up at some point. Maybe. Yes. Oh, I should check on her, shouldn't I? Oh, my. Well, before you do that, the other question is, do you want her in the house longer? If a mm. repeat of last night happens. Do I, do we think a, do we think a repeat might happen? Why do we have any idea what happened? Because I'll be honest, when those blades stabbed me in the armor, that was not great. Not, not a, did not, did not enjoy that. That was a very unpleasant part of my coronation, I must say. Go read your book. Um, yes, please don't. I will. Please don't dispel the house. There are <laughs> magical safeguards here to protect us and my family. Uh, oh, I know. I'm going to go talk to your mother real quick. Something's probably changed. She will know. That's great. She loves you. I'm going to get back to my studies. Uh, let me know if you find anything. Yes. Very much distracted manager reading his emails. Uh, Excellency, please. You notice a servant standing nearby. <laughs> that... Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Please, you must. You must eat. You've been sitting here for hours. Oh, I I am there's, quite hungry. I guess I guess I will do that. There's tons of food that's been spread around you that you're just noticing for the first time. I mean, you've been dimly aware that servants have been coming and sure, going, sure. And bringing things to, yep. removing things from the and table. You're... Right. When you're in the zone, you're in the zone. He'll he'll yeah. push the book to the side, away from the food, eat a little bit, and then, uh, let's be honest, he'll eat a little, little bit, and then he'll go back to what he was doing. Because that, like, again, literally the most interesting thing he's ever held in his hands that he's aware of. Back to the book. As Makari goes off to just create havoc. 
<laughs> Therosal, you make it back to the Bloodstone Arms and find that in its stead is the Bloodstone Arms. There's nothing different about the Bloodstone yeah. Arms. It's, 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 it's there. <laughs> All right, well, I'll uh, go in and... I mean, it's still morning, right? Early morning? It is. It's probably ninth bell by now. You're traveling through town. You burned up a little over an hour with all of your uh, with all of your stuff. So uh, making it from Oakheart to the Starry Night, meeting with with Pardic, and then coming back, yeah, you're probably about an hour and a half in. So just just probably just after ninth bell. You still got a few hours to, to noon. Sure. I'll ask the um, coachman. Uh, if you don't have any other business for the day, uh, maybe an hour or two before sundown, I could use a ride to another part of town. Tired of walking. Thoroughsal things. <laughs> <laughs> the the coachman gives you a nod. Um, uh, are you then releasing me to return to Oakheart? Yep. He'll uh, nod. Then uh, I will relay your request to His Excellency, and if if His Excellency says it's okay, then I'll be back. It's good enough for Thorosol. He'll yep. take his little my, mini chest with him and um, tell the the and, and enter the Bloodstone Arms. Okay. Um, you are you're recognized, obviously. Uh, you've been staying here for close to a week or close to a ten day. Uh, you're recognized by the uh, the the man behind the counter uh, in the the oh, large okay. sort of uh, lobby slash dining area. Um, he kind of gives you a wave as it's the middle of the morning rush, so he can't give you much more than that unless you stop, you know, to to talk to him. But um, but he does acknowledge your presence. As you pass through, sure. Um, Thoroso will. I mean, he's going to head up to his rooms and try to get some sleep. Uh, try to uh, make sure that he's up before sundown. Giving a couple hours before sundown is still what, like six hours or so, seven hours away. You've got Four hours. I mean, it's a long time. Yeah, you've got somewhere between. I don't know. Seven and nine hours between now and sundown. So plenty of time. Yeah, I'll get a good good nap in then. I've had a big breakfast after an all nighter, so I'll take that little chest up and hide under my pillow or something and then sleep. Yeah, you've slept on worse. Alright. Mm -hmm. Not an issue then. So Thorosal is is settled until sunset ish. Um, right. Alanir, anything in particular that anything additional that you want to do this morning? Um, no, not particularly. Um, if I recall, we really haven't slept yet, have we? Correct. Yeah, you stopped. Like Macario went upstairs to go to bed, while Eldrick went to go talk to Pardic. Uh, and you stayed down to do your devotions at as, as close after dawn as possible. But it's it's now more than an hour after you've been back to Oakheart and you still haven't slept. Yeah, he, he's he'll leave the tree and endure this and uh, yeah, go to his room okay. and crash. Absolutely doable. Okay. Well, that covers everyone except for Eldrick and Makaria, then. Um, mm -hmm. Sprout has been asleep basically since you returned to the manor. You had him taken to a, a room where he could be... He could rest undisturbed. And Well, uh, almost getting murdered by super death magic that kills an entire section of the city would do that. Yeah. So he's, he's sleeping that off. Um, 
back to uh, back to Makaria and Eldrick then in the Great Hall. Uh, Makaria, you you alluded to you you had some something additional that you wanted to do. Well, it's it's like behind the scenes stuff. So Makaria has is worried there is something grind like there obviously something is seen or is seen in her mind. So she wants to go with Madeline around the house to see what should be there and not essentially because she should know in her house if something was, you know, moved around. Okay. So that's, you know, she just figured that would be the easiest way because she doesn't want to talk to Holy at all. (laughs) (laughs) And the feeling is quite mutual as as you can tell. As you come down and and come into the Great Hall before you have the, the talk with Eldrick, you see Holy, who is uh, he's kind of at the storm, or the, the center of the storm, the eye of the hurricane, uh, with all the, the the servants. He's hovering over Eldrick, but from across the across the chamber, you know, he's not crowding, but he's definitely keeping an eye on things. And whenever you come down, your your eyes meet, and you can tell, yeah, it's not over between the two of you. For sure, um, it's actually another couple of hours though before Madeline makes another appearance. Uh, she she was sleeping it off too. It's it's a little bit before. Uh, well, it's it's just after noon. Whenever you wake up, um, it's another. It, it's actually another couple of hours before Madeline makes an appearance. Uh, but when she does, she's more than happy to take you on a tour. Of the full grand tour of uh, of the manor, just something she hasn't had an opportunity to do yet since you've been here. But she absolutely would love to uh, to go and show off all of the uh, all of the, the the myriad facets of the the decorating and the 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 uh, the fullness of her domain. <laughs> so she will. Absolutely, be you know, be, very, be very happy to lead you around the house and show you all around. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're looking for, or are you are you telling her, "Hey, I want to check to see if we're being scried upon"? What's- I would I would just let her know that I'd be casting um, detect magic because just want to be extra safe after last night. So just looking as I go to just make sure that everything she's showing me is so perfect. The way she wanted it. Understood. Um, there are practically no unaccounted for magical emanations that you can find throughout the house. There are things that are are inherently magical uh, through the house. Things like there there are um, you know, art pieces that can be commanded to light or to levitate or, or or the this thing or that thing that are, are very exotic pieces that uh, that she has collected and she'll tell you oh yeah this is this is a magical thing see what this can do and she'll show you and you can see yes. it, it has illusory magic or it has c- conjurative pr- properties or it has enchantment properties um, but nothing nothing in particular that that sticks out to you as being unexpectedly magical okay. Um, make me an Arcana check. I'm good at those. Yes. Ooh. 26. 26, okay. So, you will note... Uh, most of the construction of the home is uh, stone. There, there are wooden aspects, specifically like interior walls and things like that, are are uh, constructed of wood. Uh, but mo- most of the exterior walls uh, are worked stone. Um, partially, this is because half of the manor is actually. Um, built into the hillside. Um, The one full wing of the house is not exactly underground, but it is built into what is carved out of a 
of, of the hillside, which is the uh, far western, northwestern uh, boundaries of the big granite hill that the Rise district is built in, uh, is built on. Um, Oakheart is the best of both worlds. It's built into the side of the of the hill, so it's not fully underground. It's not fully built upon the rise. Um, it's it's just sort of nestled into a, a cleft within the rock. Um, so a lot of the exterior, um, a lot of the exterior walls are worked stone and ha that have been piled upon each other with mortar and things of, of that nature. Um, as you're moving through the house, any time that you are connected with an exterior wall, you are noticing very, very subtly there are runes carved into and between the stones. They're not inherently... They, they don't give off any sort of magical aura that you are aware of, but you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they should. They are abjurative runes that are, so, are, are, kind, are, are part of some kind of protective magic that has been laid over the house, or has been laid into the very foundations of the house, but they don't give off any magical auras. Hmm. Okay. Um, and for for her part, Madeline doesn't seem to pay that any real attention. Like you're you're noticing these things. It's very very subtle. Whoever laid these runes in intentionally tried to hide them within the stonework. But you, with a twenty six on your Arcana, having uh, having had extensive uh, studies in in um, in abjuration specifically, uh, understand that these are wards. They're wards that, yeah. that were laid likely when this house was first built uh, somewhere in the vicinity of about 200 years ago. Uh -huh. So they're old wards. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't uh, net you anything additional. It, what, whatever it was that you were looking for, you're not finding it. You found... Well, that's what I was looking for. There you go. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up with uh, tonight's session by returning to Eldrick. Eldrick, is there anything else in particular that you are interested in? Um, last, last sort of question... Uh, that could potentially be answered by the book for tonight's session. I don't think. Uh, I'm sure there is. Give me a second. So uh, Higginbottom is not mentioned at all, right? Hmm. Percival Higginbottom is. N you, you flip through the entirety of the. Are there book. any Higginbottoms? There is one. There is a Michael Higginbottom. Uh, that, Who's still alive? Who was alive 600 years ago. He was a, wow, that's a hero of the Fiend Crusade, the Triad Crusade, who settled afterward in Impilter. Interesting. Does it say... Okay, gotcha. I think, I think that's my last question. Oh my goodness. Michael Higginbotham passed. What did he do? Yep. He, he was a he was a paladin of uh, I don't know. He's a paladin of the triad. We'll say that. I don't know which specific deity he was a a, um, a paladin of. It doesn't say. Right. But he was a member of the Order of the Triad who came from Westgate uh, to fight alongside Sarshal Elitham, which is the, the leader of the Triad Crusade, who would later become the first king or the, the, the first king of Impilter following the fiendish occupation. 
Um, he fought in the Triad Wars, ex- uh, established himself as a hero. His, um, his uh, sigil is a heart with uh, crossed arms with uh, fingers extended. So, I don't know if you can see on the... But like an X made by... <laughs> Made by uh, hands with fingers extended, it's sort of like yeah. That sounds that sounds incredibly familiar to Eldrick. It does, and uh, you you recall that uh, Percival's sigil was similar. You you've seen that you've seen a a, a, a an adaptation of that sigil before, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But there is no mention of any uh, in. Uh, Michael Higginbotham's entry, it is it is said that he uh, never had children and passed in his sleep uh, some 30 years following the Triad Wars in Impilter, in Lirabar specifically. In Lirabar. Does it say why he was in Lirabar? Uh, it's just that is where once uh, once the the wars once the once the war was won and the demonic hordes were driven back, that's where he retired. Good. And Lirabar is the capital of Impilter, so it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Uh, he did distinguish himself as something of a hero, um, and there are multiple mentions of um uh, of his it, it it's um uh, it sticks out to you as odd that his smile is often mentioned throughout the text his his smile would light up the night his smile this his smile that he he was often he was distinguished by his smile interesting that's, that's mentioned a bunch of times in the text. Throughout the text, yes. Are there any people other than the... Uh, any any unrecognizable people that are mentioned in relation to him? As, like, friends or comrades? People that, like, I wouldn't have seen in the book otherwise? Um, there are a number of other knights that were mentioned alongside. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm looking for less noteworthy people. Any less, like... Is there a random mention of like his boot shine or something, or his his squire who never made an soldier? Um, make me a make me a, an investigation check. Oh no! Never mind. Never, never mind. Apparently, this is all my stuff. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. That would be geez, a nineteen total. 19 is definitely not bad. It ain't um, terrible. When you're adding 8, it's it's not difficult. Um, oh, yeah. There is a mention in his entry uh, of um, him traveling alongside several names that you recognize as being uh, heroes of the, uh, the, the Triadic Orders. And among those... Uh, are um, Sir Gregory Valentine, the Hammer, as you recall. I do not forget my hammer that I have lost. So, no. Uh, Sir Vardic Blackpool of the Companions of the Noble Heart. Um, Painbearer Alistra Datura of Ilmater. Illustra. I'll I'll provide all of the names please in do, chat please after. Do. Yeah. Yes. Please do. Yep. Um. Sir Marcus, call the way. It's uh it's hyphenated. Call the way, of Torm. Hmm. Okay. And Sir Tierce Arcady, of Torm. Gee, that's not a totally recognizable. 
otherwise known as the Falcon. Which one of those was otherwise known as the Falcon? Arcady. God. And there is, is this a, the... Sorry. There is a mention in that uh, that note that there is a or there are monuments uh, in three Impilturian cities that stand at least to the day that this record was taken. Um, commemorating the sacrifice of these uh, of these men and women. Like specifically these people or is more like a generic specifically of the specifically well there are crusade uh, memorials all over in Pilter. Every mm -hmm. city has Absolutely. one. But mm -hmm. there are, there are three cities that have uh, specific memorials to this group of uh, notable warriors. And they would be where? Um, in Lirabar. In, La in Lavagar. And Sorry, La Lavagar? La Lavagar is the fortress um, to the northwestern, uh, the northwestern segment of Impilter. Um, the, gotcha. it's the it's the uh, headquarters of Impilter, uh, Impilter's Northern Sword, the, their army. I have not been there. Got Eldrick it. has not. That's correct. Okay, we have been to Lirabar. Yes, very you, much you have been to Lirabar. You were you were arrested in Lirabar. That's yeah, I was one. accused of stealing a stone. It was kind of a big deal. Yep. And the other is in, uh, I think it's in Eastwatch. Which you also have been to. Uh, it's the it's the farthest east city. It's on the, uh, mm -hmm. it's the it's the it's the naval capital of Impilter. So I assume we went through there on our way to uh, Lirabar. You caught a ship there, mm -hmm. um, and and rode from Eastwatch, or sorry, Ilmwatch. It's not Eastwatch. Ilmwatch is the name of the city. Um, Ilmwatch, you caught a caught a ship there. The Rights of Man was the name of the ship. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you traveled from Ilmwatch to Lirabar, um, stopping a couple of different places along the way. But you, you stayed on that ship until Lirabar. Uh, what was the name of the ship again? I'm sorry. The Rights of Man. Got it. Yep. And um, you will you will know you will note. That um, the three cities that are listed are mm -hmm. the are the three uh, main uh, centers of power for the Impilturian military: the Northern Sword, the Southern Sword, and the Eastern Wave. That makes sense. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. And, I don't yeah. have any more intelligent questions to ask, unfortunately. I'm sure I should. <laughs> All right. Well, it is after 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, so we will go ahead and call tonight's session there. Thanks to everybody who joined us this evening. Uh, players, thank you for your patience in some cases. I'm, I think everybody at least got an opportunity to do something tonight, so I appreciate that you, that you uh, gave me a little bit of extra time to get Eldrick through his... Uh, his little little situation there but either way uh, we will pick up next time which should be the first of october for uh the next episode episode 32 mm -hmm. uh, come back and join us uh if you if you're if you're watching come back and join us this coming thursday if you're interested in league of legends uh if not then we hope to see you next tuesday for more Bloodstone. And then, of course, the following Monday, the looking to be the 7th of October, uh, will be our next Starfleet Battles Academy stream. Uh, for the cast, for the other dads, thank you all for coming out tonight. We will see you next time. Good night and GG's. Good night.